to stand up straight with your shoulders back is to open yourself up to the world. You're not in a def you're not in the defensive crouch of a prey animal, technically speaking. And that is the circuitry that's governing posture. It's prey versus predator, or something like that. And and it, to stand up like that is to expose your yourself to the world, but in a bring it on sort of manner, not not precisely combative. There are many ways to define self-confidence. So let's start by breaking down the word self and confidence. Self obviously refers to yourself or the self of someone else. Confidence has origins in many languages, including French, Latin, and possibly more. What we know is this. The French origin of the word is assurance of goodwill in the ability or truthfulness of another, confidence. The primary origin of the word that we know for sure is Latin, confidencia, which means to have full trust or reliance. So, when we combine what we have, we have trust and reliance in oneself, and to extend that in one's skills and abilities. Skills and abilities are different. So, when these words are tossed around, they don't always mean the same things. Abilities are things that you're born with. These are your natural talents or your inborn or innate skill set. These are things like being a quick learner, empathetic, good communicator, or self-motivated. This is the reverse of ambition. We'll talk about that in another video. Skills, however, are things that you learn through experience. So these are things like work ethic, working in a team, flexibility, determination, and persistence. I am willing to bet right now if you did a google search you'd find lots of conflicting graphics in the image tab that confuse self-confidence with self-esteem the graphic on screen is just such an example fortunately if we remove the idea that it was used to explain low self-esteem we will actually arrive at the point of understanding what low self-confidence looks like when we think about it We're going to see low self-confidence manifests in a lot of places in our lives. It can be rooted back as far as childhood. A domineering, over-expectant parent that puts too much pressure on their child it can really dramatically impact the child's sense of confidence. As we've seen from some of Jordan Peterson's material, this can manifest sometimes as narcissism. Another good example is Sam Vaknin, who is also on YouTube. Check it out. Narcissism is a bit tricky, though, if you're unfamiliar with how it works. So, the outward expression of narcissism varies with the type of narcissism. With the grandiose narcissist, this manifests as an exaggerated sense of self-confidence, which, when it's commensurate, only adds the narcissist methods of making reality appear just as they paint it. However, this is but an illusion, a story that the narcissist tells their victim, so that it's easier to control and overpower the victims of narcissistic abuse. With the subliminal narcissist or covert narcissist, this illusion is played in the opposite sense. They appear vulnerable and most likely ill in some way, so as to prey on the compassion and empathy of others. A low sense of self-confidence places the weight of doubt on our faith and our natural and learned abilities. It creates within us the perception that we're not good enough, that everything we do is just ultimately going to fail, or that we're just not good enough to have a relationship with this or that person. And there are many ways in which low self-confidence appears, but the result is always primarily the same. As we said, the process starts with doubt. Whether this comes from within yourself or from someone else, the seed of doubt becomes deeply planted. From this doubt, we may try to do the thing we set out to do, we might not. This last really depends on your level of motivation and ambition, and we'll talk about those topics later on in the series. Sometimes we may attempt to do something but fail. If our self-esteem is high enough, we might try again and with persistence, we'll eventually get the result we wanted. The flip side of this is, we might try and fail, but because we have low self-esteem, we really won't have the foundation from which to build self-confidence. Again, we'll talk about self-esteem a bit later in the series. 
when we fail or ultimately cease to attempt to practice and learn a skill, we're going to feel bad. This is perfectly natural. It is resilience that helps us move forward after all. Resilience requires a fair bit of work, and we'll probably talk about that a little bit later, and that might even be a multi-part video because resilience is something that takes a lot of practice and it takes a lot of understanding of how the process works. Suffice to say, when we let doubt in, shame will fill the gap. Shame compounds our guilt, and then, with shame, we end up in a vicious cycle that undermines our self-confidence. Guilt causes shame, shame causes guilt, and so on and so forth. Now that we've talked about the dark side of self-confidence, let's talk about the benefits of self-confidence. Some of the benefits of self-confidence are a better ability to learn new skills. We've illustrated learning Turkish because there's a high correlation between learning Turkish and high self-confidence. You'll find the access to that paper in the links. We're hoping to be able to gather some data of our own so that we can establish idea for other areas besides one specific language. It's obvious that you'll feel better about yourself, at least in the regard of feeling good about the skills that you learn. However, if the skill is not something that lines up with your core values, then this is a false sense of high self-confidence, and it can manifest negatively. When you're truly self-confident and it lines up with your core values, you'll be able to plan and execute your plans more effectively. Why? Because it's a learned skill. While there isn't a straight line between having high self-confidence and overall happiness, we'll draw our own line in the sand and say that high self-confidence that is not narcissistically derived is obviously preferred. People with high self-confidence, according to our observations, generally seem to correspond with a positive effect on all the five dimensions of self in one way or another. However, minutely, self-confidence helps us feel ambition to learn new things. The ripple effect is when acquiring a higher degree of self-confidence impacts the other four dimensions in a positive way. As an example, I went to school to learn to become a PSW, or what some places call a Certified Nursing Assistant, or CNA. I already had some skills and knowledge in this area, but when I acquired an education and practical experience in the field, this enabled me to feel more healthily motivated, more ambitious, I felt better about myself as a whole, and it opened up my eyes to a lot more externally in the world, and within myself. Hey, thank you for watching our video today. We'd really appreciate it if you could hit the like button. Subscribe to our content and enable your notifications so we can keep bringing you more content. We'd like to remind you that in two weeks, our Patreon page will be going live, where we'll be hosting an eight-week mindfulness-based stress reduction seminar virtually. From the team at ADAPT, we hope you have a wonderful day.